Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Ace Attorney. We're back in the courtroom today for what could be another long trial. The last one was pretty long. Um, this one's definitely gonna be split into two parts. I think all the trials in this chapter are. And I'm hoping we're gonna start to figure out what the heck is going on in this case today, though my hopes aren't high. <laughs> There's just so much going on in this case, and everyone is sketchy, so I don't know who did it. I mean, in the last video, at the very end, we figured out that cowboy man, Marshall, Jake Marshall, that's his name, he had fingerprint on the the, the, uh, the door in the evidence room where there was a bloody handprint. So what does that mean? I don't know. There's so many of them that are suspicious that I'm like, were they all in on it together? Did one of them do it and the rest are covering for the perpetrator? Did Goodman do it to himself? <sighs> I seriously have no clue. Let's see if we figure anything out today. <laughs> so what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Edgeworth isn't even allowed to investigate anymore. And there's that whole element too. Like, are they, are they trying to set up Edgeworth? What is going on there? After all. Lana. The victim was murdered in two different places at the same time and a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. <laughs> Hello, you came out of nowhere. I forgot I gave you like, mean girl voice. It really doesn't fit, but whatever, I'm committed. Lana. Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished actually. I'm used to all nighters th though. Jeez. This is a long time to be questioned. So how'd it go? It says Mr. Wright suspects the police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't seek capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana, don't tell me you- Girl, if you didn't do it, what are you going to tell them? Much to my regret. I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. Miss Guy. Hmm? We found trace evidence of a certain person in the police department's evidence room. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. What kind of trace evidence? Bloodstained fingerprints, to be exact. <laughs> Pretty sketchy. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we are dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Guy? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. Those two know each other somehow. I don't know if they used to work together or what. Hello, Edgeworth. <laughs> Today's gonna be a difficult day for the both of us, I'm sure. Court is now in session for the trial of Ms. Lana Sky. Again. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is. <sighs> Hemp, I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department from the prosecutor's office. Get the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. But that's not physically possible, is it? Judge, we already established this in the last trial. Why are you acting surprised? I forgot! I had a late night partying last night. It left my brain. What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow, this is one messed up trial. I know, I'm so confused. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today I will present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. Now that's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things. Even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. And that's supposed to be an admirable trait? Yes, Phoenix, okay. Me and Emma apparently are both down bad for Edgeworth. Very well, let the trial resume. 
On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand. For its first witness, the prosecution calls. Who's it gonna be? A suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. Oh, right. This is what I mean when I say there's so much going on in this case. I totally forgot Officer Meekins was uh, apparently the suspect of the police department murder, which makes no sense because how could he have killed Goodman and Lana also killed Goodman at the same time, the same man. It's definitely not either of them. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? My god, the murderer. Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. <laughs> Hi, Megan's. Will it this please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir! I'm Officer Mike Meekins, sir! My occupation is, um... That would be murderer, sir! <laughs> Your occupation is murderer? My god, he did it! Judge, no. Uh... So you're telling us you are a professional killer? Sir, it was me, sir! I'm the one who did it! I'll never kill anyone again, sir! You gotta believe me, sir! He, he clearly believes he did it. Can we see the tape that supposedly exists of him killing Meekins? Or Meekins? You are Meekins! <laughs> of him killing, uh, Goodman. Uh, actually, what we'd like to hear from you is- Sir! I'm what you would call part of the younger generation, sir! I'm younger than you, you're an old man! A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend! Please, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Help me, sir! I can't stop saying sir, sir! What was Sir Meekins? Yes, sir! Give us your report to the crime. Sir, that in order. Yes, sir! As you wish! After all, I am part of a generation that must be told what to do, sir! You can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. <laughs> Crime report, sir. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. I fought for my life. Then I, I did it. After that, I passed out until another officer smacked me awake. Hmm. I saw the judge making that face, and I knew he was gonna go, hmm, <laughs> he always does. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you. It was self-defense, free him at once. Do unto to others before they do unto you. That's the line I had a hard time saying last uh, video. That's the Meekins family motto, sir. I see, and you fainted, and a colleague helped you regain consciousness, how? Nice, let's give them an award. Yes, sir. We should give him an award. He knocked me upside the head, sir. Mm -mm, very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I bet you're all wondering why I shook my head no, but said very well. I, too, am wondering that. What I need to hear is more info to work with. Does that mean press on all? Because I'm just it just now hit me that, oh yeah, I do have to cross-examine him. And... None of those statements stuck out to me. That's the strategy I'm going with. Okay, but although it's not your normal duty, you were assigned to guard why? Why were you assigned to it? it. Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir! I am in charge of hiring new recruits, sir! Yikes. Now there's a scary thought. Evidence transferal is taking place on the day of the crime, which means many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. Ah, so that's why. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir! The blue Badger? Yes, sir! The lovely police mascot created by the Chief of Detectives, sir! Is this where he's gonna come in and be evidence? Because he's in my court record, the Blue Badger. Yay! I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transferal process. That was my sole mission for the day, sir. I see. Sounds like a very, uh, important mission. We wouldn't want the blue badger getting hurt. 
After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around. Then I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. You did? The blue badger is... When was he moved back out? See, he's not there now. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? He spotted a, a, a suspicious man. In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir! I have one right here on my deck! So then your ID number should be listed on here, right? There it is! I found it! This is the one right here! Could you please read us the number? Yes, sir! It's 49895969! That's my number, sir! I see. Huh? But the number 49895969 is shown as being used twice. Yeah, it is. What? It's shown being used before. Uh, it's shown being used before Goodman even went in there. And then at the same time as him, later. Please explain, witness. It's no real mystery, sir. The first time is when I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. And the second time is when I went to go get him after everything settled down. Okay. I see. So it was during that second time when... Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man on the security screen. I... Okay. So that's... Added to that. Okay, you were the only one... Oh, you were only doing what you are trained to do. Okay, you were attacked. So you were attacked. Can you please tell us exactly what happened to you? It was a knife, sir! A knife! Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you. My god, what happened then? Well, with me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. That's what I reacted, sir! I swung my arms like an octopus, struggling to detain him! That's the proper police form! That's how I got this gash on my hand! Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be- When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked! I grabbed the man by his collar! And you fought for your life. And you did it! You did what? What exactly do you mean when you said you, when you say you did it? Yeah, because you're not clarifying how you killed him. You're just saying you killed him. I know I don't look like the type, but I'm really into kung fu films, sir. The man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched his knife from him. You took his knife. I spun him around and performed a disarming maneuver. I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I uh, see. You must have been desperate. You made sure to close your eyes like a man. Okay. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood, and then... Then the next thing I knew... Yes? He punched me right in my face, sir! You didn't kill him. Is, is that when you got knocked out? And then you passed out. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you, like... Da damaged, <laughs> injured him a little, but you definitely didn't kill him because he got back up and then he punched you. Hmm. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious. Oh, right. According to the report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right in the head, too. I woke up crying tears of pain. Wah! Wow. That's nice. Uh, I mean, it's nice that you recovered. That is not nice that you were punched. That would be very rude of me to say. When I came around, though, I made sure to finish my mission, sir. Your mission? Yes, sir. The blue badger, sir. And that's how you got back out there. I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, your honor. 
Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's got a point. Um. Yes, Officer Meekins. With regards to that, sir. Take a look at this. It was sent to my jail cell. Is that the tape? Can we please see it? Chief Gant delivered it to me just this morning, sir. Oh, Chief Gant delivered it now, did he? Hmm. The chief? Delivered it? What is that? A videotape. Yes, sir. That's absolutely right, sir. A videotape, sir. It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room. What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape. I was told it had been mistakenly erased. They're setting you up, Edward. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. Looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. They are purposely messing with Edgeworth. But why? Well then, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Everyone gather around. Bring your children. I know one of you in the past trials brought a child. Let's all watch a murder in HD. Are you ready? This is a once in a lifetime experience for most of you. Oh, please stop using that word murder, sir. It scares me. A video of a real murder. So what are we getting ourselves into? Wow, video. What an upgrade from previous trials. <laughs> wow, look, there he goes. Love drops. There's no way to tell if that's Goodman. <laughs> Here comes Meekins. Oh. Oh God. It looked like he was like truly ready to kill Meekins there. Okay, we're gonna miss the big moment. Keep panning back and forth. Uh, dude. Meekins, you didn't do it. <laughs> Where is he? Where did he escape from? Where'd he go? Did he crawl? <laughs> what? <laughs> and he just, ooh, in that position. Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. The blue badger certainly is a beautiful creation. Judge. Sorry, I meant to say, how can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirred within us? What the hell was that riddling piece of plywood? Sir, that is the pride and joy of the entire criminal affairs department, sir. Got mixed up on my words and I just rolled with it. That's the blue badger, sir. Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? Video from the security camera placed in the evidence room. Yes, well, anyway, this tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter, uh, someone in the evidence room and some sort of, uh, activity did take place. Your Honor, instead of relying on com- instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. Is that all right with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir! As you wish, sir! <laughs> I just noticed his his badge has him doing that pose. <laughs> uh, mystery man. His face can't be clearly seen in the video. But there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir! I mean, he opened the locker, which required De Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir. So it must be him. No one else could have unlocked it. I'll press on that. What's this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can be can only be, only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. 
That would mean the victim at the crime scene would have to have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Well, the glove fell out, so maybe it wasn't fully closed or something? I don't know where this cross-examination will lead, but everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. I'm gonna go with, it must be him. But he said that. Okay. This one. However, the most important detail is not shown in this video. The man's face. Sir! If I may say something, sir! Please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir! I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust his knife into my body, sir! My unsettled state can testify enough to this, sir! Yes, you have a point. The footage doesn't lie. That is... Unless the defense can find a problem with it? Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. Is there a problem with the security video? Yeah. Regarding the video contained on this tape. There is one thing in particular that seems rather strange. The glove fell out, so maybe the glove was holding it open. Is there a way to tell if it was open? Strange. This contradiction leads to the possibility that the man may not have been Detective Goodman. What? This video contains such a contradiction. Objection. Interesting. Your Honor, I have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth, I love when you propose things. I propose we have the defense point out point out to us this alleged contradiction in the video. He would want me to point it out. Mm-hmm. Very well. Proposal accepted. I love when Phoenix Wright points things out. Let us further inspect this piece of evidence. I will now play the security tape. Everyone, gather around with your children once again. Mr. Wright, please show us the contradiction you speak of. I have to point out a problem in the video. This is the first time I've ever had to do that. You can do it, Mr. Wright. It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, or pause the video. Okay, I have to literally physically do it? Okay. Just take a good look and be sure to point out point out the right thing. Please don't play it too many times. I can't stand watch I can't stand watching this video. How did this guy ever become a police officer? Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where is the contradiction that indicates the man may not have been Detective Goodman? Okay, um... Okay, wait. Pause is... The light's on. Right? So yeah, it is still... The other, the, yeah, these lockers don't have the light on. So this one, it's not closed. The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Officer Meekins. Sir! Do, do you mean me, sir? As I understand, the locker apparatus works like this. When you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint. If it's a match. You see, there's the glove right there on the crime scene tape. The light turns on and the lock is released. According to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir. If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. Hello, Blue Badger. We There's a light on. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I... Okay, we're just going through it again. Da, 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 da. When the victim reaches for the handle to open the locker, let's rewind a little to earlier. <laughs> Can we rewind any faster than this? Da -de -da -de -da -da -do -do -da. 
Here. Notice the light. What's this? It's already lit. My god. Phoenix right, you've done it again. Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. Ah! Order! Order! What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. But the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When the door is shut, a sensor is triggered. And the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know. It must have broken down. Of course, I'm not an expert in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor will detect and report any malfunction. Oh well, this goes to show novices should keep their mouths shut. I am not the smartest man in the room, I admit. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Yes, you always know things. Yes. Why wasn't the locker locked? Me, Your Honor? The glove. Yes, well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Uh, oh, um, maybe something like jammed the system sensors? Something jammed the sensor? Say, there's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so too. There's gotta be another clue somewhere in this footage. Very well. Let's inspect the video once more. Bring your children, gather around. It's time for the third viewing. The locker wasn't locked. Mr. Wright, please point- Ah! It starts too quickly. Okay, we're gonna fast forward. Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed you earlier. God, we gotta watch it from the beginning, don't we? It's not fully the beginning, but... I mean, I guess it kind of is. And then we go the whole way back. Fall. What's this? Something white fell out of the locker! But sir! It's been my experience that things fall out when doors open or when doors are opened. I often fall out and roll great distances. Wait, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. You, great distances where? You, uh, I. What did he just say? You, does he fall out and roll great distances when he gets out of a car? What did that say? I'm gonna know what, but like when I'm editing this, I wanna know so bad. We can't. The dialogue auto advanced, so I couldn't finish reading. We can't be sure that that item was completely inside the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? In- inserted? Stop making me watch this video, my god. And back again. Can't you just show me the part? This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times it gets stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. Is that what you roll out of too, your patrol vehicle? Like I said, I'll know already by the time this goes up because I'll have edited it. And you guys can go back and pause. Ah! Stop auto-advancing, I didn't get to read! But the object would have to be extremely thin to fit in the door. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator! But at the crime scene... There just might have been something that fits that description. But sir! By insulator, you don't mean! I think I finally got this figured out. It keeps auto-advancing on... Megan's dialogue. He needs to stop doing that. Very well. Will the defense please present the relevant evidence? What was the insulator that was stuck in the locker door? Do I have a glove? Do I oh yeah, right there. It was this. 
I found this near the locker. A thin rubber glove. But we can't be sure that that was in the victim's locker. It has a tag that says SO9 incident. The video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. But that isn't the case. The lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is that not so, Officer Meekins? Sir! It would appear so, sir! S stop strangling yourself, Meekins. I dare! I dare! I dare! So are we to believe, then, that the victim whom the witness stabbed in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman? Do not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility and nothing more. The victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Sir! Me, sir! I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir! I'm going to kill you. Oh! You mean that, sir? Of course, sir! Is this a joke? Very well. Begin your testimony. <sighs> Mystery Man 2. My favorite sequel. There's one thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman, sir! To enter the evidence room, one must present their ID card. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. I know, this is gonna be... He had lost it. He submitted a report that he lost his ID card. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his uh, his card. That's that's it, right there. An ID card record. I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. Just before the crime, hmm. Yes, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? That's a good point. And I want to know who all the sevens are at the top. My money's on Gant. This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too. Although it doesn't make much of a difference. <laughs> Your hair's always standing on end, Phoenix. There were only a few cases up for transfer all there, and most were cleared up by noon. Mm-hmm, right. I see. Now, let us move on to the cross-examination. It's your turn, Phoenix Wright. It's my turn, Judge, and I know what to do. It is... This one. He wears his... Rubber glove. Uh, Goodman's lost item report. Boom. Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. Oh, I'm not good at waiting, sir! I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. No, it doesn't, Judge. Oh. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. A lost item report. It's only half completed. But it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess. You believe there's something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. Order! Order! So now, what does all this mean? Please help me. Me too, Judge. <laughs> it can only mean one thing. It doesn't require much evidence- or much thought. <laughs> the main officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room 
was not Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Order! 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 Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defense. Bravo, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Thanks, Edgeworth. Bravo. I get the feeling you're about to screw me over, though. Allow me to summarize the defense's argument. At 5.15 p.m. on the day of the crime, the man in the evidence room, Officer Meekins encountered, was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, then the murder in the evidence room is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant of the murder. Uh, that is... well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago, you seemed content to be pointing your finger around. This isn't going to end well. Basically gonna conclude... <laughs> that since it's unrelated to the actual crime, that, like, it really has no effect on, like, the Lana stuff. Well, well, it seems you finally realized. Exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. <laughs> I screwed myself over! Yay! <laughs> Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm stupid. Remember, we established this earlier in the trial. I'm not the smartest one in the room. The defense has already done the explaining for me. The victim in this video is a fake, which means a murder did not take place. At the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. So... So the real crime could only take place at one location. The underground parking lot, at the prosecutor's office, the murderer being Ms. Lana Sky, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. A trustworthy witness observed the moment the defendant used the murder weapon. Ah! Uh, damn it. What have I done? I knew that testimony was mine. I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. The activity in the evidence room still leaves many unanswered- many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim Officer Meekins encountered? I don't know. <gasps> was it Marshall? Because his- his fingerprint was found, and it was on the, like, bloody one, which would have happened between- with their scuffle. And where did this person disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. I love when you bow. I can't even be mad that you just totally ruined me. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you have to do something, or else Lana... What do I do? How am I supposed to get myself out of this mess? Object! Objection! One moment, Your Honor. What now, Mr. Wright? You always do this. Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not. But I almost walked right into the prosecution prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. Don't make me watch it again. I, where where did he go here, though? We don't see him walk past the camera again. Is there another way out? Which is not past the camera? I don't know. However, it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. <laughs> I 
I know you're mad when you look at me like that. <laughs> hmm. The defense demands further examination into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incident at the police department to be unrelated. We've not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. Uh, wait, I think I've got one. This just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. That's right. Mr. Wright, do you mean... Your Honor, is that you reading my mind again, Emma? Because I didn't say that out loud. Or did you just sense it from my vibe? The defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh? Whom do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person whom you would have testify. What is his or her name? Name reveal. It's Jake Marshall. I don't know why I said that. You're right. It is Jake Marshall. You read my mind. Just like Emma did. I've been working on reading people's minds. Why him? I can't let Edgeworth know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Very well. The court will take a 30 minute recess while the witness is subpoenaed. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. I'm going to go down the slides again. Oh, I forgot when you say take a recess, you literally mean recess. You do so love the playground that's outside the courtroom. I do, Edgeworth. You know me so well. I need my sliding and swinging break. Court is now in recess. To the playground! There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Huh? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you figured out- figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured anything out. <laughs> I am clueless, Lana. I have no clue what's going on here. Lana, you're the one who knows everything. Emma? You always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. Yeah, you know- it would be a lot easier to help you if you helped me. You're not even giving me any explanation as to what your side of the story is. I I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? <laughs> do you trust her? Lana, do you know if your sister can read minds? Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. <laughs> no, Gumshoe! Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You got a lot of nerve, pal. Making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it all off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Sorry, Detective. You better be, pal. Hey, 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 hey! I, I didn't see you there, Chief Prosecutor Sky. It's a lot of haze. That's okay. So, have you brought what I asked? Oh, 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 ho, oh, 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 You mean this, right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. Oh, Gumshoe. My name. Never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. But I bother you to bring me the SL9 incident files. I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. The SL9 incident? But Lana, that's... 
I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, you might do well to read them. I can't believe you, you the chief prosecutor, were a witness in that case. This guy was a witness? Wow, maybe the three of them are like colluding. Or the three of them, I mean, Angel, Marshall, and Goodman were like colluding against her or something because she was a witness and it didn't get them the outcome they wanted or something. I don't know. I just, I don't even trust the victim, honestly. Maybe I should trust the victim. I don't trust the other two. Okay, files for the Joe Dark killings solved two years ago. Take it from me. You don't want anything to do with serial murders. Can I look at it now? Let me check it. Okay. Incident number SL9 closed. Perpetrator, Joe Dark. Crime, serial murder. Sentence, death. Victims, Edward Jones, Jason Knight, Edith Kirby, Rachel Moss, Jeb Bates, Neil Marshall. Okay, so someone with the last name Marshall, does this case hit close to home for you, Jake? Trial data. Head prosecution, Miles Edgeworth. Hey, baby. Witness. Witnesses, Lana Sky and the Sky. You were a witness too. Investigation task force. You know, Emma, you haven't, for you being a witness, you really haven't told me anything about this case. I thought you were also clueless. Okay, executive investigators, Damon Gant, mm -hmm, Lana Sky, head investigator, Bruce Goodman, investigators, Jake Marshall, Angel Star. Okay, interesting. I didn't know Emma was a witness. She seems to be acting kind of clueless, but okay. Neil Marshall. Is he related to Jake Marshall? That's what I'm curious about. Oh, what? Now that I've brought you your stuff, you're just gonna ignore me? Uh, Emma, but why? Yeah, is that what we're gonna bring up? Why is your name on here? What? My name's in there? I don't know, unless... No, it couldn't be. Lana, this SO9 incident, is that... Unless Emma didn't know that what she was a witness for is the SL9 incident. That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as the Joe Dark killings. The Joe Dark? No, no, Lana. That's over with, no. Emma, wait, she ran away. What the heck? Uh, you know what? I just remembered. I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. Jake Marshall, Angel Star, Damon Gant, Miles Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emma. <laughs> They're all involved. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings two years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. I'm not going to help you, though. <laughs> Why am I helping you if you're not helping me? Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. I better take a good look at this file. To be continued. Oh, leave me on a cliffhanger. What's going on here? Oh, okay, I'll save. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So, what does this mean? So, Emma was a witness. She didn't know that it was SL9. Who is this Joe Dark? They were both witnesses to it, apparently. I'm still hung up on one of the victims, their last name being Marshall. So is that somehow related to Jake Marshall? And I know Lana and Jake used to know each other pretty well, enough that Emma also knew him. And now they don't talk anymore. So is this all related somehow? Is she a witness because of this Neil guy or is that totally unrelated? And is her being a witness why maybe they're trying to get revenge on her or something? And on Edgeworth? I'm, st I'm still confused. If anything, I'm just more suspicious of Angel, Jake, and Gant. I really think they're all involved somehow because they're all so suspicious and they're all of them are just like too intertwined and they're all sketchy. And Edgeworth being the prosecutor and you know, maybe not getting the outcome they wanted could be have to do with why they're messing with Edgeworth so bad, but then that's Gant that's also messing with him. And he was in involved in the last one. I. I can't figure out how he factors into all of this. I can't figure out how anyone factors into all of this, okay? 
I want to say maybe like I'm getting a better picture of it all, but I don't know if I am. I really don't. I learned more. I'm putting more pieces together, but I don't know how the pieces fit into the big picture. Oh, I'm very interested to see more though. Like Emma ran off. Is she going to be with me in this trial now? <laughs> I don't know. She seems really upset about whatever case this is. Oh, what a way to leave me. <laughs> I want to know more, but I guess I'll have to wait till next time. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and go. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.